This is a WMUR Commitment 2020 special in partnership with the New Hampshire Institute of Politics. Conversation with the candidate. Tonight, Montana Governor Steve Bullock. Good evening and welcome to our Conversation with the Candidate series. I'm Adam Sexton and our guest this evening is Montana Governor Steve Bullock. Tonight we'll be getting to know the Democratic candidate and where he stands on key issues. At the start of our show, I'll be asking Governor Bullock some questions, and then after a break, we'll have our studio audience ask their questions in a town hall format. But before we begin with that, let's take a quick look at the candidate's biography. Steve Bullock was born in 1966 in Missoula, Montana, and grew up in Helena, where he graduated from public schools. He has an undergraduate degree from Claremont McKenna College in California, and a law degree from Columbia University Law School. Bullock was then a labor attorney and led a successful citizens initiative in Montana to raise the minimum wage. In 2008, he was elected as a Democrat to be the attorney general of his state. As the AG, Bullock challenged the Citizens United campaign finance decision all the way to the Supreme Court. He won election as governor in 2012 and was re-elected in 2016 when President Trump won Montana by 20 points. As governor, Bullock expanded Medicaid, froze college tuition, and work to preserve Native American language and culture. He has also vetoed more bills than any governor in Montana history. Governor Bullock is married, has three children, and still lives in his hometown. Governor, thanks for joining us on Conversation with Canada. It's great to be with you, Adam. Right, thanks for having me you. this morning. So you're not going to be on the big debate stage uh, this evening um, in Miami. Uh, is that a fair decision by the DNC and what's the impact to your campaign? Well, I was certainly disappointed in the DNC's decision because Part of it was looking at polling, and look, I only got into this five weeks ago. I had a job to do, governor, my legislature just ended, and I had to get Medicaid expansion reauthorized. So if I had to choose between, you know, chasing 100,000 donors or getting 100,000 people saving their health care, easiest choice I would ever make in my life. But we still have a long way to go throughout this election, and even though I'm not on that debate stage, I'm, you know, in the first in the nation primary. And the folks of New Hampshire are the ones that's going to decide these elections, not necessarily these debates or the party rules. So I'm really excited to be here with you this evening. We see a lot of attention being placed on President Trump, obviously, and Democratic candidates are saying that's not where it should be. We should focus on policy. But we do have voters who say they're going to be voting in this Democratic primary to look for the candidate who can beat President Trump. How do you reconcile those two things? Well, I think you can reconcile it. And is the only one in this field that actually won in a Trump state. He took Montana by 20. I won by four. 25 to 30 percent of my voters voted for Donald Trump. We have to win back some of those places that we lost. But it has to be more than just being against him. We have to give people a reason to believe that Democrats, or and I fundamentally believe that why I'm in this is because a whole lot of folks, this economy doesn't work for them. They're not, they're working harder, they're making less money. They look at the political system, it's captured by the dark money and outside spending. So they're like, why not? It doesn't work for them. So we have to not only talk about where Donald Trump is failing them, but give them a reason to believe that we can make their lives better. Tensions are escalating with Iran. The president has chosen to take the route of sanctions, averting uh, a military response. Do you agree with the way he's handled this so far? I do not. I mean, we are at a dangerous point right now, and it's been, become more dangerous because of the lack of strategy of this Trump administration. Like, let's be clear, Iran is a threat to Israel to the neighbors, to the region. But this maximum pressure idea with no thought of strategy, long term or short term, what we've done is the allies that we need to count on to be step by step with us. We more or less rejected their efforts. They had put together the you know, nuclear agreement. And we're going it alone. Time again, this administration said America first is America alone. How you deter Iran, certainly we have to have the ability to have military force, but there's no reason we should ever get there. The global community can keep Iran in check, and that's what had been happening until recently. So put the Iran deal back together word for word, or would you make any changes? Oh, I'd be happy to make some changes, but what we do know is from the time until recently, Iran had actually complied with the nuclear agreement, the JCPOA. There wasn't any further development of nuclear weapons. There was the allowance of inspectors. And we gotta make sure, because we are now escalating to a point of great danger. Now, Iran is not a good actor, 
But the way that we've dealt with this in the past and up until this point was actually bring in our allies and even some of our adversaries. We're keeping a check on Iran. Right now, it's just Katie bar the door and our allies aren't even trusting us as far as what direction we might take. Let's shift to immigration. Right now, a lot of attention being placed on the treatment of migrant children who are coming across the border. Uh, the system is being overwhelmed on the one hand, but on the other hand, we're seeing these reports and the administration defending uh, not providing these children yeah. with toothbrushes, uh, sleeping areas where they can sleep where the lights are off and other amenities. Uh, I think uh, there was uh, someone, an American, who had been held hostage by Somalian pirates and he said even the Somalian pir pirates gave, gave me him a toothbrush. Yeah, gave <laughs> me a toothbrush and uh, soap. So what's going on here? No, it is horrific. And no one that presents at our border should be treated like animals. And that's what this administration is doing. Now, they are being overwhelmed. But this is a humanitarian crisis. This isn't a crisis that should be dividing us by, as people or as a nation. We certainly need to provide the resources to help families and kids that come to the border. We shouldn't be ripping those families apart. But let's also recognize, like we are appropriating about a third of the aid to the Central American countries that we were even four years ago. So on the one hand, we're not providing assistance in country. And then once they get there, once they get to the border, we're treating them so inhumanely. Like we should treat everybody that comes to the border. That doesn't mean that they get to stay in America but with the human decency that we treat someone of our own family. You also have a failed system. I mean, you have 400 immigration judges for a caseload of about 780,000. You need to do structural reform, and we should be doing that as we also pull together a comprehensive plan for immigration reform. Quickly, as we wrap up here, if there have been human rights violations, do you think anyone in the administration or the federal government should face legal consequences? Well, I think that they should certainly be held accountable, but even more than saying, all right, who are we going to scream at? We've got to fix this and we've got to fix this now because the thought that you've got, you know, kids not even getting mattresses because they lost a lice comb was one of those. And we all saw that picture of that father and the daughter yesterday. And there's got to be a way that we're making sure that we don't have to see those pictures of people literally dying because of a broken system. Governor Bullock, thanks for answering these questions. The tougher questions await, though. It's coming. As we get back here after the break, we'll bring our studio audience into the conversation. Do stay with us.